Hello and welcome to Business 360. I'm Ashmit Kumar and here are the headlines that we're tracking this evening. Sensex and Nifty cool off after hitting a record high in early trade. Mid-caps outperformed the blue chips. US Federal Reserve is expected to hold interest rates steady later tonight. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman takes charge at the North Block. Pankaj Chaudhary takes charge as her deputy. In a briefing with officials after assuming charge, the FM said that the reforms undertaken since 2014 will continue, highlighted an optimistic economic outlook for the coming years. Three frontrunners for the post of the next Federal Bank Managing Director and CEO. Sources say that the bank has submitted the names of former Kotak Mahindra Bank Deputy MD, KVS Manian and two internal candidates to the RBI. Automobile industry asks the new government to reduce GST on two-wheelers powered by CNG and flex fuels. Sources say industry also seeks removal of 3% cess on two-wheelers above 350cc. That's an exclusive. Nara Chandra Babu TDP Supremo Chandra Babu Naidu takes oath as Andhra Pradesh Chief Minister for the fourth time. Janasena Chief Pavan Kalyan is sworn in as the Deputy Chief Minister along with 23 other ministers. Prime Minister Modi, Home Minister Amit Shah and senior leaders of the NDA attend the swearing-in ceremony at Vijaywara. At least 41 people are dead after a fire broke out in a building that housed foreign workers in Kuwait City. Initial reports suggest some victims could also be Indians. External Affairs Minister S. Jai Shankar says he's deeply shocked and promises full assistance by the Indian Embassy. Israel military says it is carrying out intelligence-based targeted operations in central Gaza and Rafah. Claims that a large rocket barrage was fired from Lebanon into Israel. Hamas seeks some amendments to the U.S. ceasefire proposal. A United Nations inquiry accuses both Israel and Hamas of committing war crimes on and after the 7th of October. India will surpass the U.S. as the country with the most software developers in three years, says GitHub's global CEO Thomas Domke expects generative AI will evolve into what Jarvis was for Iron Man. That's an exclusive. Students using AI chatbots to cheat in exams, beware. Coursera has a new tool to help universities verify your answers and catch plagiarism. The global CEO of Coursera explains how this works a little later on this show. Well, first up, let's begin with a quick look at the day's market action. The Lal Street scaled new peaks intraday, but ended off the highs. Nifty hit a record high of 23,443, but ended 120 points below that. Uh, broader markets outperformed. The mid-cap index uh, soared over 1% to hit new highs for the third straight session. Prashant Nair is joining us now with more details. Prashant, give us some sense. Some consolidation is what we're seeing uh, on after lifetime highs. A good day all told, but uh, there was that 3 p.m. sell-off which happened once again. I mean, the market did give up about 60, 70 points from the day's high for the Nifty, uh, but we did end higher. And I think after the kind of rally we've had to be up day on day, I think it's just good news. Bank Nifty has been underperforming, but that's largely because private banks have, had, uh, be, have, not, have not been of any help. PSU banks, no such problem. It was one of the top gaining sectors. PSUs, broadly, not just banks, continue to charge ahead. Mid caps and small caps, unlike yesterday where uh, they gave up gains in the last 30, 40 minutes, today they were up 1%, one and a quarter percent on those indices. Now, large cap stocks on the Nifty, so there was Coal India, Power Grid, the old economy uh, sort of uh, names doing well, Aishur, SBI Life and Tech Mahindra uh, were some of the other stocks which participated. Mahindra and Mahindra cooled off a little bit today, Britannia and Tata Consumer. I mean, actually, FMCG was one of the few sectors only, uh, you know, one of the two sectors which actually was even lower as a, uh, a pocket. Now, uh, in the broader market, uh, decline, uh, advances far outnumbered uh, declines. And, uh, but the thing is, today, if you, and I'm going to put out names here, but so many names which we don't really talk about very often, small, small cap to micro cap companies, 
buzzing. And uh, some of these names, uh, really hearing uh, them for the first time, which is which are not the uh, names that I'm putting up here on this uh, board. Elecon Engineering, Max Health had a big move today. Reliance Power, Gravita India, SunTech Realty, Dredging Corporation continues to move higher, 30% in three, four days. Kirloskar Brothers, Aptis, the home finance theme was up and about. PNB Housing has been doing well recently. Today it was LIC Housing there. Uh, Premier Explosive and there was something like Arman Financial, which also did well. Pullbacks coming through in names like Zomato. There was Marico, Heritage Foods, uh, pulled back a little bit. Infa, which was a big mover yesterday. Pedilite, uh, SW Solar, Vietech, Vabag. These are just pullbacks because stocks have run up quite a bit. And there was a Brigade Enterprises, which was down as well. Into the Fed meeting. And of course, we'll be reacting to that when we come back tomorrow. All right, Prashant, thanks so much for that wrap. Now, all eyes are on the United States Federal Reserve, which is due to make its decision on key interest rates today. CNBC's uh, Fed survey has found that investors expect the central bank to leave benchmark lending rates unchanged. However, a majority of respondents expect a rate cut in December, while 46% see the Fed cutting the rates in the month of September. Well, that's, of course, the big trigger. We'll keep an eye out for that. But meanwhile, Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman has assumed charge at the North Block today, while Pankaj Chaudhary uh, has taken charge as her deputy. The Finance Minister told officials in a briefing that reforms undertaken since 2014 will continue. She also highlighted an optimistic economic outlook for the coming years. In a tweet on X, the Finance Ministry said that Sitaraman asserted that the government is committed to ensuring ease of living for citizens and will continue to take further steps in that direction. And sticking with ministers who retain their portfolios, senior BJP leader Nitin Gadkari took charge of the Road, Transport and Highways Ministry. He has handled the portfolio since the Narendra Modi-led government came to power in 2014. This makes the 67-year-old Gadkari the longest-serving road transport and highways minister. Well, some action now from the automobile space. The automobile industry has requested the new government to reduce GST on CNG and flex fuel powered two wheelers. Parishit Luthra joining us now with more details. Parishit, uh, give us a sense what is the auto industry seeking, particularly the two wheeler space? The Society of Indian Automobile Manufacturers has written to the Ministry of Heavy Industries requesting for a GST reduction from 28%, which is the base rate for all two-wheelers currently, to 18%, specifically for CNG and flex fuel two-wheelers. And when the base rate becomes 18%, to further reduce the GST on uh, these kind of vehicles to 12%. Uh, this request has only been made for two-wheelers and specifically for CNG and flex fuel uh, two-wheelers. There are companies in the auto industry such as uh, the Hero Motor Corp, uh, Bajaj Auto and uh, even TVS which have developed or are developing CNG and flex fuel vehicles which can run on higher blends of ethanol going up to E85. Uh, Siam has also requested for a removal of 3% cess on all two-wheelers above 350cc. The reason why the industry body is uh, urging the government to consider this request because they feel that these uh, low-carbon vehicles are good in terms of meeting our environment goals. They will also increase the overall two-wheeler penetration in the economy, increase productivity, considering that uh, two-wheelers are used for e-commerce and quick commerce specifically. But if the tax rate remains 28%, then the uh, cost of acquisition of uh, CNG and flex fuel vehicles will remain high because the uh, vehicle efficiency, fuel efficiency of these vehicles uh, goes down. And uh, there is also a lot which has been invested by the companies in developing these vehicles. So you need to offset that investment as well. Uh, they have also argued that the tax rate in India, which is 28%, uh, coupled with uh, a road tax and also an insurance premium and 3% cess for vehicles above 350cc is a, a lot of tax burden on a consumer. And this is much higher than economies like Thailand and Indonesia, which have a 7% to 11% tax rate uh, respectively. So we need to bring the taxes down on CNG and uh, flex fuel two-wheelers so that they are adopted more and bought more by uh, consumers in the days to come. Now, this is a move that the Ministry of Heavy Industries can consider. They can make a proposal to the Ministry of Finance. But finally, this is an issue that will have to be taken up by the GST Council and decided by it. 
Right, Parikshit. So a request there from the auto space, the two-wheeler space to the new government. Here's a CNBC TV18 exclusive. Sources tell CNBC TV18 that Federal Bank has sent names of three candidates for the MD and CEO post for the RBI. The bank gained nearly 4% to hit a 52-week high in trade today. Abhishek Kotari joining us now with more details. Abhishek, give us a sense who are the front contenders for this position. While sources do tell CNBC TV18 that Federal Bank has sent uh, names of the shortlisted candidates for the post of MD and CEO. So these names, as per my sources, were sent about 10 to 15 days back. Uh, three names have been uh, sent to RBI for this post. Uh, one is an external candidate, uh, KVS Manian, who is the ex-deputy uh, MD at Kochak Mahindra Bank. We had reported in February that Manian's names have been, uh, you know, shortlisted by uh, Federal Bank for the post of MD. MD and CEO and this name now has gone to RBI. Two internal candidates have been named as well. Uh, one is uh, Shalini Warrior and Harsh uh, Dugar is the second one. Uh, both of them are executive directors at the bank. Now CV, uh, CNBC TV18 had reported in Feb of 2024 that KVS Manian is, could be in the race for this post that is MD and CEO of Federal Bank. We had reached out to Federal Bank. However, they have not yet responded to our query. Back to you. Right, Abhishek, thanks a lot for that. Now, the National Company Law Appellate Tribunal has refused to grant a stay on an NCLT order initiating insolvency proceedings against Jai Prakash Associates. The NCLAT has directed banks to respond to the appeal and ask them to consider the company's one-time settlement offer. The matter has been listed for hearing on the 24th of June. Remember, Jai Prakash Associates' suspended director, Sunil Kumar Sharma, had moved the NCLAT, seeking a stay on the NCLT order. He argued that insolvency proceedings will put the company's infrastructure projects into jeopardy. And realty major prestigious hospitality business may hit the primary market soon. Sources tell CNBC TV18 that the company aims to raise 2,000 to 3,000 crore rupees at a valuation of 20,000 crores. Vivek Ayer joining us now with more on Prestige Group's hotel business IPO plans. Vivek. Well, South India-based Prestige Estate is in focus, largely along expected lines, something that the company had guided to at the end of Q4, where the company is looking to do a significant value-unlocking exercise, where the company plans to demerge its hospitality business and go ahead and launch an IPO for the same. We understand from our sources that the company is now on track to go ahead and launch an IPO for the hospitality business. We understand that the company has already gone ahead and appointed bankers. The bankers appointed a GM Financial, JP Morgan, as well as CLSA. We understand that the company is looking at a valuation in the range of 17,000 to 20,000 crore for the hospitality business and the company will look to raise close to 2,000 to 3,000 crore via this particular IPO process. The company is in talks with the investment banks in order to go ahead and gauge the interest for this particular IPO. This will be a significant development given the fact that the company has a lot of capex lined up as far as the hospitality space is concerned and the company in the con call had said that it would most likely number one do the demerger of the hospitality business number two go ahead and you know raise funds via the ipo route in order to fund the large capex plans that the company has lined up we reached out to the management of prestige estates you know they still haven't responded to our queries now the company said a huge pipeline of new assets under planning or under construction or under approval which is why they need the funds they're going in with an ipo at this point of time, it will be interesting to see you know, when the IPO hits the bosses and number two, what kind of valuations is Prestige able to garner from this particular IPO itself. Thanks so much for that. On to politics now. TDP Supremo Chandra Babu Naidu is back at the helm of Andhra Pradesh politics after five years. He took oath as the chief minister of the state for the fourth time today. Days after the TDP Janasena BJP alliance registered a thumping win, in the assembly elections. Naidu, along with 24 cabinet ministers, took oath at Vijayawada today. Janasena chief and Telugu film superstar Pavan Kalyan took oath as the deputy chief minister. Naidu's return to power also gives a new lease of life to his dream project of building a capital city at Amravati, a plan that he had announced a decade back. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Home Minister Amit Shah, Health Minister Nadda and former Vice President Venkaya Naidu attended the oath-taking ceremony. Senior leaders from BJP's ally parties in the NDA 
were also in attendance. Top actors like Rajni Kant, Chiranjeevi, Ram Charan, Alu Arjun and Nanda Murli Balakrishna attended this ceremony as well. Now, the first session of the 18th Lok Sabha will be held from June 24th to July 3rd. New Parliamentary Affairs Minister Kiran Rijiju said that oath-taking of newly elected members of the parliament, election of the speaker and an address by the President Draupadi Murmu will be the key highlights. And Prime Minister Narendra Modi will be travelling to Italy tomorrow for the 50th G7 summit, which is to be held on June 14th. This will be the first overseas visit after being sworn in as Prime Minister for the third term. PM Modi is expected to hold bilateral meetings with Italian Prime Minister Giorgia Meloni and other leaders from G7 nations. The conflict in Russia, Ukraine and Middle East will be amongst the top talking points at the summit. India will surpass US as the country with most software developers in three years. That's the word coming in from the global CEO of GitHub. In a conversation with me earlier, Thomas Domke said that he expects the future of generative AI to be like what Jarvis was to Iron Man. He added that generative AI will develop into a companion that stores information like an alternate brain. Technology, the co-pilot will develop into a companion that's always with us. You know, you could think about it as uh, the Jarvis uh, to Iron Man uh, in, the, in the Marvel <laughs> movies. Uh, something that memorizes all the things that we can store in our brains because there's too much information in our lives. And today, you know, we already have something like that in our pockets. It's our mobile phone, our smartphone uh -huh. that stores a lot of the information. But then you still have to go into your mail app and search for that one email you know, that has your frequent flyer number. And instead of finding that, you're finding all the marketing material from, from that airline. Uh -huh. And so it will have that, you will have that companion that you can ask questions um, about things that happened to you, uh, you know, last month, last year, maybe, you know, in, 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 the, in the farther future, you know, what happened to you as a six year old. And so you will have uh -huh. that second brain, that second memory that can reason over that information, that can advise you of what book is the right book to buy in a bookstore. And if you take that into the, professional workforce, you know, today with the Microsoft Copilot, we already have capabilities in teams to summarize a meeting, you know, to identify action items, to log who has said what, and, you know, imagine you're coming back from vacation and you have all these Teams chats and meetings that have happened during that time. You can go through those and have it summarize the information for you so you don't have to read through all of that because today we have information overload and um, every system you know, every video app, every streaming service, sports, all that is fighting for our attention. And we have only so much time during the day uh -huh. uh, that we can spend on both work and, and personal life that these companions will help us to filter out signal from all the noise that is in our lives. I think that is the important thing. It will enable us to be more creative, to use our energy to the things that are really meaningful in life and get rid of all the sure. noise, um, you know, whether it's booking travel, uh, whether it's fighting through emails um, sure. or, or, or summarizing a meeting. With respect to the Indian market, uh, what is the kind of traction that you're hoping for? What is the kind of uh, expectations that you have? Uh, any numbers that you would like to drop on this journey forward? And what the next leg of growth in India for you looks like? Yeah, I mean, first of all, I think we want to see this happening. We want to see uh -huh. that 2027, uh, India is becoming the largest developer community on the planet. Um, we want to see, you know, maybe in the future, the next Microsoft or the next big tech company coming out of uh, Mumbai or coming out of Bangalore. Um, maybe they're coming out of uh, Rio de Janeiro or out of Paris as well, right? I think we want to see that the democratization of software development is actually happening, that the human language empowers everyone who wants to build software to be able to, to do that. And specifically here in India, you know, we want to see you know, more, um, we want to see more students learning, learning coding. We want to see more startups, you know, uh, building, building cool technology. We want to see that uh, Indian large language model from happening. And of course, we want to see uh, more engagement um, with the GitHub community. And well, you can catch that entire conversation with the global CEO of GitHub at 7.30 p.m. right here on CNBC TV 18.
And with that, time now for a short break. But coming up, students using AI chatbots to cheat in exams. Beware, Coursera has a new tool to help universities verify your answers and catch plagiarism. Details when we come back. Welcome back. Now, Israel military has said that it is carrying out intelligence-based targeted operations in central Gaza and Rafah. The military has claimed that a large rocket barrage was fired from Lebanon into Israel. This comes even as an inquiry by United Nations-backed commission found both Israel and Hamas guilty of committing war crimes on and after the 7th of October. U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken announced more than $400 million in humanitarian aid for Gaza. The Indian government has said that two Indians who were recruited by the Russian army were killed during an ongoing conflict with Ukraine. This takes the death toll of Indian nationals recruited to fight alongside the Russian army to four. The government has urged the Russian authorities to repatriate the mortal remains of the deceased. We Russian officials that जो भी भारतीय युद्ध क्षेत्र में किस प्रकार से आए हैं कैसे आए हैं वो अलग बात है उनकी वापसी की जाए Over 40 people including several Indians have been killed after a fire broke out in a building housing workers in Kuwait Rescue operations are currently underway and more than a dozen have been currently hospitalized The authorities have said that they have contained the fire and are investigating the cause behind it Back home, Jammu and Kashmir has witnessed three terror attacks in three days. Two militants and one paramilitary personnel were killed after a late-night encounter in Jammu and Kashmir's Kathua. The second encounter occurred in Doda, where five soldiers and a special police officer were injured in an attack on an army post. These instances come two days after a bus crashed into a gorge, killing nine persons after it was attacked by militants. The centre has appointed Vice Chief of Army Lieutenant General Upendra Devedi as the next Army Chief. Earlier, the government had extended the tenure of the current Army Chief, Manoj Pandey, by a month to June end. A Param Vashisht Seva Medal awardee, Lieutenant General Devedi, has served in the Army since 1984. He has held key positions including Director General Infantry and General Officing Commander in Chief of the Northern Command as well. Now, the Supreme Court came down heavily on the Delhi government for not taking action against the tanker mafia in the city amidst an acute water crisis. The court warned that if the government does not act, it will ask the Delhi police to look into the matter. The Supreme Court also directed the Delhi government to file an affidavit stating the measures taken to control the water wastage. The case will likely be heard on June 13th. Now, online learning platform Coursera has a new tool to help universities verify answers by students in examinations and catching AI plagiarism. Rachna Dhanrajani caught up with the company's CEO, Jeff uh, Majun Galda, where he explained how this plagiarism detection works and what the students need to watch out for. Take a look. And what we're launching now is a whole set of features and capabilities to prevent cheating, and, and, I'll, and I'll go through some of them. Uh, so some of them are really simple. It's things like ID verification, where you put your ID up, the camera and, and the GPT matches your face, it reads your name, it knows what student is supposed to be taking the test, and it verifies that it's really that student. So that's that's a simple one that's not so so uh, so unique. There's something called graded item, lock, graded item locking. So a lot of students try to skip through the videos and just take the test. Well, this is an easy one. Let's make sure that the students watch the video before they can even take the test. We call that graded, graded item locking. And Waxon University in Hyderabad is, is actually using this as, as one of our things. Another is timed and attempt limits. So not only turning on the camera, but also making sure that there's a limit attempt and a time attempt. That's not super complicated, but it's another key feature. Another one is, is called proctoring, where um, the camera comes on and the AI watches to see who's in the frame. Is there a second person in the frame? Does the person leave the frame? Does the person divert their attention? Is there anything that looks like unauthorized materials in the frame? So this is automated, generative AI-based proctoring. Now, 
the AI does not say you're cheating or you're not cheating and you know, you're gonna get penalties. It creates a flag and it gives it to the professor so that if there's a flag that looks like cheating, the professor can actually watch the video and decide, does it look like cheating? People call this human in the loop. And so that's, uh, proctoring is a big part of it. There's also a feature called browser lockdown so that when you're working on an assessment, you cannot use any other windows on your computer. So your attention has to be focused just on the assessment. There's something which is plagiarism detection. So we have with, with uh, Turnitin, it checks every submission against every other submission. It also checks every submission against submissions on Coursera. Coursera's newest AI-based tools have been introduced with an aim to enhance the process of learning and integrity of exams. And the one tool that stands out the most is the AI-based Viva. Where in colleges, students submit their assignments and are questioned by their professors, in this particular tool, their submission is first checked by artificial intelligence. And this is known as an integrity check. It is aimed at understanding the thought process of the student at if they've taken the Gen AI route to complete the assignment. Your artificial intelligence will then raise flags to the evaluator and give its recommendations. It's something the students will definitely be watching out for. With that, it's a wrap on this edition of Business 360. More news and updates continue right here on CNBC TV 18.